afternoon, everyone, and I'm very sorry for the delay. Uh, I hate to do that, but thank you for your flexibility and bearing with us today. Just one item at the top, and then, Deb, I will turn it over to you. One year ago today, the brutal regime of Bashar al-Assad launched a deadly chemical weapons attack on the suburbs, suburbs of Damascus, where more than 1,000 people were killed. The Assad regime's unconscionable and indiscriminate attack on August 21, 2013, used cruel weaponry that has long been internationally condemned, further exposing the regime's total disregard for human life. Though we removed and have now destroyed the most dangerous chemicals in the regime's declared stockpiles, a number of critical issues remain unresolved, including discrepancies and omissions related to Syria's chemical weapons declaration to the OPCW. These and our other concerns must be fully resolved. The haunting images of unspeakable human suffering on that day and throughout every other day of this tragic conflict remind the international community that Assad long ago forfeited his legitimacy to lead the Syrian people, of the need to hold the Assad regime accountable for this and other atrocities against the Syrian people uh, perpetrated during this conflict, and of the urgency of addressing all dimensions of the Syrian crisis, the United States remains steadfast in our resolve to continue working with key allies and partners to do so. Deb. Hi. Hello. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, Foley, okay. if I could. Uh, the United States has always said that it's never going to negotiate with terrorists, and I, I was just wondering that in light of this particular case, um, what kind of discussion is going on now within the administration about, you know, negotiating with terrorists or None. paying ransoms None. or – We do not make concessions to terrorists. That includes uh, we do not pay ransoms. One of the main ways ISIL has been funded uh, throughout this conflict has been uh, from ransom payments that uh, others have paid. Uh, we believe just in 2014 that's in the millions of dollars. So we believe that paying ransoms or making concessions would both put our all Americans overseas at greater risk for kidnapping and in harm's way, uh, but that ransoms would also fund and finance exactly the groups we are trying to degrade their capabilities. What about um, a family, if they particularly wanted to negotiate? That's the U.S. government's position. I can only speak for us. I don't want to speak for any family that would ever be in this kind of situation and what would decisions like they illegal, would make. Would it be illegal, though? It would be illegal? Would it be illegal? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I'm happy to check. Um, I, I don't do know the you, answer. What do you know about this, uh, the, this confirmation that it, they asked this for a ransom, you know, of $132.5 million? Uh, for those kind of details that I, I know the family has, has spoken to and others, we're not going to be uh, uh, confirming or, or talking about those details in any way of, of those uh, uh, conversations. Did the, the government give any kind of a, a, a forewarning that they were – or did they threaten that they would kill him? Did the U.S. government get any kind of well, we did advance not. The U.S. government did not have notice contact of this? with ISIL, so let's set that aside. Um, we're not going to get into the details of any possible communications between the captors and families or, or anyone else. I think it's not really our place to do that. What we do know and what I will say is that every day uh, Jim Foley and these other Americans uh, are in the captivity of ISIL. Their lives are at risk, and we know that. But for more specifics, I'm just not going to get into those. Okay. I have Come some more. We'll go around. Okay. Let's go in the first row. Do you, yeah, know, Leslie and then. Do you know if um, – how does it impact the U.S. when um, European countries pay for the ransom of, their, of, of, of citizens that are held captive? How does that affect um, how uh, perhaps treatment of U.S. Um, hostages? Well, I haven't seen any comparison of how it affects other hostages. What I have, do know and what I just said is that uh, we believe, the United States government believes very strongly that Paying ransom to terrorists uh, gives them a tool in the term of in the, ter in the in the form of financing that helps them propagate what they're doing, and so we believe very strongly that we don't do that for that reason. And uh, as I said, in 2014 alone, I think uh, ISIL's gotten in the millions of dollars fr from kidnapping of Western citizens, and obviously we believe very strongly that we need to cut off their funding and cut off their ability to operate, and don't want to put other American citizens in harm's way. Do you have an, uh, a figure, an update figure? I think somebody asked yesterday, but you didn't have it. Um, was how many? Uh, what does the U.S. estimate um, uh, as far as hostages that ISIS has? 
And Overall, yeah. we're not going to get into the specific numbers. We don't want to put too many specifics out there, obviously, while they're still being held. Uh, I, we, talked, we can talk a little bit about the operation, if you want, that we talked about last night. But uh, there are that operation was intended to rescue Mr. Foley and a small number of other Americans. We're not going to go into more specifics than that for their security reasons. Was it just one operation? Uh, there was, yes. The one they spoke about last night? Yes, that right. was one. Mm -hmm. And there's been no other operations before that or even attempts? Well, uh, we don't uh, confirm one way or the other uh, reports or any other specifics about special operations uh, undertakings. We did not have the preference to in this case either. But when it became clear uh, that several press outlets had this story and were going to be publishing it, we were forced to acknowledge it. Could you tell us when, when that operation took place? It was earlier this summer. won't give more specific details than that. July? Earlier this summer, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, again, on the ransom policy, mm -hmm. is there the beginning of a debate within the administration on the ransom policy when, when you compare, as uh, my colleague pointed out, when you compare what European countries are doing and when you see that, for example, the two French journalists who were held with James Foley are free and, and, and alive? Uh, I haven't heard that there's a debate inside the U.S. government. We have had this policy in place for a very long time. Uh, it's in place to protect our citizens overseas uh, and also to not provide terrorists with the funding they need to continue to carry out their heinous acts. So uh, this is a long-standing policy, uh, one that I think uh, uh, we believe in uh, is the best way to keep people safe overseas and not give more incentive for other Americans to be kidnapped. Marie, Marie which countries yeah. have... Uh, which countries does the U.S. believe have actually paid ransoms? I know there are a variety of reports out there. I don't have details to confirm for you. Is the U.S. talking with its uh, allies in the EU in particular about strengthening the existing sanctions against al-Baghdadi and others in IS in order to basically underscore the need to starve them of funding, if you believe that this is critical to defeating this organization? We are. And just a couple of things I got on funding. There were a lot of questions about this yesterday, so I got some facts on this. Uh, we did, the State Department did designate uh, al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIL, in October 2011, uh, as well as the spokesman for ISIL uh, just uh, recently. They're designated as specially designated global terrorists <laughs> under an executive order. Uh, so obviously this prohibits U.S. persons from engaging in transactions with these officials. And one of them, Saeed, was the person you asked about who had been arrested in Kuwait. We had seen reports of his release after being arrested. <coughs> We're seeking more information on those. Can't confirm those one way or the other. But he's one of those that, that the Treasury Department had designated. They designated five additional people as well. Uh, ISIL's funding comes from many sources. It comes from criminal activity uh, in Iraq and Syria, bank heists, as we saw in Mosul. Uh, extortion, robberies, smuggling, uh, and kidnapping for ransom, as well as raiding villages and towns. It also controls some petroleum facilities in eastern Syria. It does also receive some money from outside donors, which I think is something folks in here asked about yesterday. Just two quick points, then you can follow up. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have information that governments have supported them. Private fundraising networks increasingly rely upon social <laughs> media to solicit, solicit donations and communicate with donors and recipient opposition groups or terrorist organizations. It also enables fundraisers to solicit donations from supporters in countries where otherwise it would be banned, such as Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, fundraisers collect money through events held at private residences, wire transfers, informal financial transfer systems at mosques. We've seen some of this in the past. These tactics aren't new. Um, but that's also one of the ways ISIL raises money. But again, go going, ahead, but Ross, again, wait, go, Ross, yeah. But, but yeah. again, going back to the point about your suggestion that other governments have indeed given money to IS in <clears> order <throat> to get the safe return of their citizens, what is the U.S. government doing to try to impress mm -hmm. upon these other governments that doing so undercuts the very legitimacy of the sanctions regime? and possibly creates more of a security risk to the U.S., to other countries, than just the short-term and very right. understandable desire to get people home. Right. Uh, we're having the conversation. Uh, we've had it for some time. I don't have more specifics on, on that for you. I'm happy to check and see if there are. Do you have any yes. figure on the, the actual amount of money that ISIS has? I mean, there were figures today that talks about something like $2 billion. 
Are you aware of that? I can check on that, Saeed. I think my colleagues at the Treasury Department might have some more on that. I don't know if I have an overall number here. Okay. They do have quite a bit of money. Okay. And, uh, and, and you're saying, yeah, I'm sorry, and you're saying that most of that money is, uh, or these revenues come from kidnappings and ransoms and so on? And criminal so, activities like, you know, uh, attacking banks, uh, raiding towns. Dealing uh, in drugs or doing something like this or dealing like in arms? Uh, I haven't heard that, but, you know. Okay. Now, can you tell us, uh, I think the Global Post said that they received a message uh, that uh, the ISIL was intending uh, to, uh, to kill Mr. Uh, Mr. Foley. Have you heard about that? Uh, I'm not going to confirm those specifics uh, one okay. way or the other. They no. can speak to those specifics. Okay. Now, I know on, they on the operation itself, mm -hmm. you know, the operation is a failed operation, whatever. Now, uh, it, it, it's similar in many ways to uh, um, Eagle Claw, which was done in, in 1980, maybe. Uh, was there any assets left behind in, in this case? No, Were not there to any, my knowledge. any military, uh, U.S. military assets? Or Check with the Defense Department, but, but, but not to the to best my of knowledge. your now, they didn't leave any equipment or. Correct. Uh, and, and, you know, as, as folks have said, and again, the Defense Department can speak to this better, uh, the intelligence picture dictated uh, the timing of the operation. Uh, they unfortunately were not present. Uh, there were a number of fatalities on uh, the other side, none on the U.S. side, and once it was determined the hostages were not present, uh, the U.S. forces well, left. Obviously, to conduct the operation, there must have been quite solid intelligence uh, in this case. So Correct. what could and have possibly have gone wrong? Well, the President believed there was sufficient intelligence uh, to launch this operation. Uh, look, this, the intelligence picture is a very difficult one. and, and uh, As we all know and having come from that world, uh, you can develop an intelligence picture uh, and the President felt it was sufficient enough to act on, particularly given the danger we believe the hostages are in. And sometimes, unfortunately, uh, these things happen. But uh, I will say, setting aside this one operation, uh, every single day before and after that operation and today, we have many, many resources, every tool at our disposal to try and find these people and bring them home. Yeah, that work my, is ongoing. And my last question on mm -hmm. this, I remember some, a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, Former uh, Ambassador Ryan Crocker said that it was a wrong policy not to have engagement with Syria, not to have a, a mission uh, in Damascus, because that does compromise your ability to sort of source out uh, intelligence and so on. In, in retrospect, is it, was it a wrong policy not to have any kind of contact with Syria? Not that, well, we make decisions on our embassy based on security reasons and other uh, considerations, and that decision was made a long time ago. But I will say that we have enormous intelligence resources dedicated uh, not just to finding and bringing these uh, hostages home, but also to the overall picture in Syria as well. Uh, and, and in terms of the intelligence, the President <coughs> and his advisors uh, believe the information that we possess, which is collected through various sources over a period of time, uh, combined obviously with the very real, th real threat, warrant to the action we took. Everybody involved uh, in the operation performed exactly as they were supposed to. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the outcome that we all uh, would have hoped yeah. for. I have a follow-up on mm -hmm. Number one, do you know of any instances where uh, Mr. Foley tried to escape? Uh, I don't have those details. Number two, do you believe that Mr. Sotloff is still alive? Again, not going to get into any of those details or questions. To investigate uh, Foley, uh, Attorney General Holder and FBI Director Comey have said they want to use sort of traditional law enforcement to do this. Has there been any outreach uh, to the powers in the area to, to facilitate, uh, you know, U.S. personnel, uh, or will there be From to a law conduct a law enforcement perspective? Yes. I can check with our law enforcement colleagues. Obviously, there will be a criminal investigation, as there always is when there's an American citizen death overseas, as the FBI and DOJ can speak to. There's also an ongoing uh, intelligence community focus on this uh, to determine who may have been responsible. Uh, ongoing intelligence uh, capabilities being put forward to see possibly uh, how those people could be held accountable as and, well. And, and if I can they work in concert with each other, though. And, and if I can follow up on that, in mm -hmm. just the past uh, 10 minutes or so, Buck McKeon, the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, has asked for an investigation as to how the leak came out. A m moment ago, you sort of gave an explanation saying, well, there were a number of news organizations that had this, and so we Absolutely. felt it was compelled. We had no intention of ever making this public, period. Uh, I want to be very clear about that. For the operational security, both of the special operators and also of the remaining hostages. Uh, it became uh, clear to us when a number of news outlets, including some represented in this room, came to the U.S. government uh, recently 
with very detailed information that had been provided to them. I have no idea who provided it. We were forced at that point to acknowledge it, given they were uh, many of these outlets, if not all of them, were going to run stories one way or the other. But that said, then, is, is Chairman McKeon's uh, call for a probe uh, wrongheaded? I haven't seen the call specifically, so I don't want to comment on it. But as, as I, I think I made clear from the administration perspective, uh, we did not have an intention of making this call. Is the U.S. Uh, frustrated that the attempted raid was leaked to several in the media? You know, we know how this all works, and I understand there is a huge uh, interest in, in what we might do as the United States government to bring our people home. Uh, I fully recognize that. We, you know, had briefed the families on it. Uh, Congress was notified, of course, uh, in a classified way at the time. So, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be overly critical of it. I was just explaining how it eventually did come out. We were not planning to put it out, but once it did, we were forced to acknowledge how it. How does this hurt future U.S. efforts to try to, resort, to try to, uh, get the remaining hostages back? Well, I, I'd refer to my colleagues at the Defense Department for, an, you know, a tactical uh, assessment of that. Obviously, we want every tool in the toolbox available to us. If in the future we were to undertake similar operations, uh, we would obviously want those available to us, which is why a lot of the operational details we are still not uh, releasing or talking about or confirming uh, on the operational side for that reason, so we can preserve that ability to use that in the future. And you might have gotten into this yesterday, but can you describe at this point what kind of support the U.S. government is providing to the Foley family, especially given that trying to repatriate his remains is pretty well nigh impossible? Uh, we have, since we learned uh, of his uh, capture, the State Department, the FBI, officials from the intelligence community in the White House, uh, and others have been in touch with uh, the Foley family and the Sotlaw family. Uh, we have been remained in close contact with them. Uh, the State Department and the FBI reached out uh, when we uh, got notified, uh, unfortunately, of, of what had happened, and we have been pr providing assistance to the family in any way we can. Uh, there is the question of repatriation. As you mentioned, it is a difficult one. We believe it's an important one. We will help in any way we can, but it will be difficult. Anything else on this? Yeah. The same uh -huh. <clears throat> First one is related to there are some reports about that the Twitter accounts of uh, ISIL are, are stopped or banned or whatever. I uh -huh. don't know the exact. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this all the accounts or part of the accounts or well, what? Well, how so do you I let Twitter speak more broadly to this, but the State Department and the Defense Department did reach out to social media sites like Twitter and YouTube particularly the night the video and the photos were released, uh, to highlight for them accounts that may be uh, violating their own usage policies. And so they, and Twitter I think has talked about this on the record, uh, will take action when there are things that violate those policies like these kind of videos or photos. So broadly speaking, I think Twitter can speak to their own policies, but that's the communications we've had. Talking about ISIL, you know, it's like uh, yesterday you describe all this confrontation may take place more and more and uh, and the question is now in the area is like and all the people are asking is make a difference now in the in the type and the scope and the tactics of confrontation with ISIL then it was like 10 days ago or a week ago well let's two two points on that uh, as i said yesterday we don't rule anything out in terms of protecting our people or bringing those to justice who have hurt our people wherever country that's in uh, I'm not indicating decisions made uh, in any way, shape, or form, but I just want to be very clear that we maintain the ability and retain uh, the capability to, to go after people who harm our citizens wherever they are. So let's do point A there. Point B is we're still very focused, and let's not lose sight of what we're doing in Iraq uh, that's been going after ISIL. Uh, both obviously setting aside the humanitarian situation, but outside around Mount Sinjar, helping break the siege there by, by hitting ISIL targets, protecting Erbil, uh, t helping the Iraqis take back the Mosul Dam from ISIL. We are very focused uh, on going after ISIL uh, strategically when it impacts uh, the goals the President laid out in Iraq, and you know we're looking long term at how we can do that more going forward. But we are engaged very heavily right now uh, in fighting them and in helping to build capability of the Iraqis to do yeah, that. The reason I'm asking you uh, this question because mm -hmm. you are mentioning Mount Singar and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Erbil and all these things, but the real issue now is becoming different. I mean, even they are announcing ISIL people in their message, whatever the recorded messages, other messages, that now we are in a war with America. 
is not about ISIL versus the United States. I think I made that clear yesterday. They are killing anyone who gets in their way. Sunni, Shia Muslims, Christians, Yazidis, Iraqis, Syrians, anyone who gets in their way, and now an American. So this is not about what the United States is or isn't doing. This is about ISIL's stated commitment to murder, rape, enslave people who don't agree with their ideology and who get in their way. And I think, you know, the more we can say that, uh, because it's true, it's important for people to remember that as they look at the overall picture. The reason that I'm asking this question, because it's, it, I mean, I, in, in realities and in politics, it's matter how they look to us or how they look mm -hmm. to United States. Mm -hmm. It's not how they, we look to them or we are seeing it. You know, it's like, but they are announcing that it's a war against America, right or wrong, that's, that's what they are saying. Well, they can say whatever they'd like, but what I am making clear is that's not what ISIL represents. And they don't re represent any religion. Uh, they are at war with everybody they come into contact with. And that's why we are very focused uh, when we uh, outline goals on, on uh, attacking their targets when they threaten those goals, on helping the Iraqis gain in capability to fight this better on their own. And, and to be very clear, uh, holding people accountable when they hurt our people. That's something we're very focused on, uh, and that's certainly what will be a guiding principle of our action the going forward. The other concern which is usually raised to, to, to those who have some kind of memory, which is like, like 30 years ago, 40 years ago, whenever this kind of confrontations were happening, like in the case of Beirut, the Marines, Barak, and others, the, the, the next step of the United States was to withdraw from the confrontation. Well, I don't think that's been universally true. Look at Afghanistan. When we were attacked, we took the fight to them. I'm just trying to, I mean. I know. I'm just I mean, bringing a different historical uh, comparison forward that I think this administration particularly has shown uh, very willing to, no matter how long it takes, find people who have killed Americans, who have harmed Americans, and bring them to justice. We have a history of that. Uh, there's, that's something we're certainly very, very committed to here. You think, Madam? We're, 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 we're all going to do one at a time. One more. Here. Let's let's start here on this and go across and then go to Ross. Yeah. You think, Madam, this is going to be a major discussion of issue at the United Nations upcoming General Assembly meetings, and because who is funding them and who is arming them and how to stop this new, uh, many people call new face of. Uh, terrorism or al-Qaeda? I think it will be, and as we've talked about a little bit, the President will be chairing a Security Council session on foreign fighters, particularly Syria and Iraq. I think it will be an incredibly important decision, or discussion, excuse me, uh, around the General Assembly when you have this many world leaders uh, in one place. I don't know, quite frankly, how it couldn't be. And you, you think you need a major powers with you, like China and Russia? We need everyone who will join us in this fight against ISIL. Right. Yes, yes, Elliot. Sir, I'm can gonna, stay on that? On yeah, that, but I'm going to go across. Side. I'm going to go across. As I said, I was going to. I will get to all of you. Yes, Yeah, Elliot. thanks. I wanted to follow up on something you s just said mm -hmm. um, on your outreach to Twitter and other social mm -hmm. media. You said you let them know um, of a content that violated their own. That may, yeah, their so own they, their usage policies. So uh, there are certain things that, that violate those policies. Obviously, the kind of videos we've seen. <laughs> do, uh -huh. uh, and we would ask for them to be taken down in accordance with their usage right. policy. So you, but you guys wanted the video down, but yes. you, you didn't make the argument to them that it was terrorist propaganda. It was on the... I can look at what their use... I don't know what exactly their usage policy says mm -hmm. in terms of what is okay and what's not, um, but in terms of that specifically in the video, it was because of the, the graphic nature of okay. it. And is but there any... Used to, there may be more details in their policy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, according to the Guardian, sorry, according to the Guardian, the person who uh, killed uh, James Foley, it's a uh, it's a British jihadist, and he's the leader of a British group, a group of fighters in Syria. Is the information correct? Uh, have you confirmed his identity? Well, we're working on that right now, working very closely with the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Cameron came out yesterday and said it's looking increasingly likely that it was a British citizen. So we are working with them on that. We are concerned about the fact that a number of Westerners, including a small number of Americans, have joined this fight. So that is something we're working very, very closely with them on right now. Do you know, according to, to The Guardian, uh, the, the Britain's security services said uh, there are increasing numbers of uh, homegrown terrorists 
uh, leaving the country to fight in Syria and Iraq. Mm -hmm. So you said you are you have this kind of concern. Mm -hmm. You will have a similar trend in the U.S., right? Uh, I think it's a, a much smaller number, but we are concerned uh, about foreign fighters going there. Uh, it will be a key topic of conversation at the General Assembly. Are you going to take any uh, actions to deal with this situation? We've been taking a number of actions, I think, to deal with the situation. Uh, look, we have tried to work with countries in the region to crack down on the flow of foreign fighters from anywhere. I think there are fighters from uh, over 50 countries now that we assess have joined the fight uh, on the side of ISIL. Uh, so uh, we're ver very focused on dealing with this and, and working with other countries in the region to really crack down on the places and ways they can get in. But once they're in Syria, you know, the, the Syria to Iraq pipeline, unfortunately, has become quite, quite porous, and there's been a lot of fighters going back and forth over that border. As we know, there's a, a second hostage in ISIL, mm -hmm. and are you going to call on ISIL to relieve, uh, to release yes, him? Yes, I did yesterday. Okay. Yes, yes. On yeah, just, ISIL? N yeah, uh, back for a second to that uh, Anga uh, summit thing. Mm -hmm. Is it invita invitation thing only? Invitation only it's or? a Security Council session, so I'm assuming all the members of the Security Council will be present. I don't know beyond that what participation will look like. Okay, so it's not like you're sending invitations already went think, out and oh no no i okay. don't think any invitations have okay. gone out i think we're still working through those All details right. yes on this staying on isil yes, yes. Um, on the general um, broader fight against the isil uh -huh. um well president obama the british prime minister and also the french president and foreign minister they all spoke about this that they need to get moving um the french foreign minister also suggested um well the president suggested an international conference on the subject and the there should be a uh, universal strategy. Apparently, um, the foreign minister has said that they would invite the regional countries, including Iran, to that um, conference. Iran's foreign minister today has said that um, I think Tehran, there was a little garble here. Do you want me to, about Foreign Minister Zarif's comments? Tehran is in touch with a number of countries. Number one, is the U.S. one of those countries discussing this? And they have conditioned their cooperation in fighting ISIL upon the um, relief of all nuclear so, sanctions. Let's just talk about this for a little bit. There, were, there was a story uh, that Foreign Minister Zarif had linked its help with ISIS in Iraq to a lifting of Western sanctions. We have seen the story. We do not believe that the report is accurate. We understand that the Iranian foreign minister, and you're never going to believe this, quoted in the story as referring to Iraq, the country was actually referring to Iraq, the Iranian nuclear facility. We've looked at the language a couple of times, actually, and think he was not linking, in that specific quote, fighting ISIS in Iraq to lifting of Western sanctions. He was talking about making progress on Iraq, the nuclear facility, to lifting of Western sanctions. Right. I right. know. But this it's was almost unbelievable. But this was a Farsi um, report. Yeah, and our, and they, our can't, Farsi, they can't, the spelling our, is totally different. I know, and our, but we think there was a mistranslation. Our Farsi speakers have taken a, a bunch of looks at it and think that he was referring to that. I'll let him speak for himself, and if he wants to clarify and disagree with me, I am not a Farsi speaker. I'm sure he would have, further, or his people would have further clarification. But on that particular AFP report, I just wanted to. Actually, I saw the Farsi report yeah, on that. Yeah, but it came yeah. from a translation of the Farsi, and we think that was not accurate. Then I know. What, it's what very about his comment about that uh, Tehran is in touch with a number of countries on possible cooperation and participation Again, in a conference? I don't have more details on that article, but on that specific point, I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. I know. It's very odd, actually. Yes, go ahead. What's your assessment of Iran's role? Are they helping in fighting ISIS in Iraq, or they are just watching? Uh, I don't have an assessment of that. I am happy to check. So we uh, uh, think any country in the region uh, should play a role, if they can, a positive role in helping fight ISIL. And a huge part of that is through promoting and helping the government of Iraq as it gets, gets up on its feet and is, is inclusive. So I think that, um, obviously, if there's a positive role Iran can play, uh, they should play a positive role. We can use that. Anything else on this? Yeah. yeah, and I'll go to you in the back. Yeah. Okay, just a couple more. Uh -huh. um, I was just wondering um, if you had any comment on, there's some analysts who are, who are looking at this on the flip side and saying that, the ISIL knows that the U.S. is not going to pay ransoms, okay? And so they get, gives them an incentive to kill 
Americans that they captured because then they can get more money out of the Europeans when they are asking for ransom but Sarah. Do you the, think there's anything going on with that? I don't, Deb. And on the flip side of that, if they knew we paid ransoms, they would kidnap more Americans because they would think they would get more money. And we don't want to fund terrorism. Okay, a couple we more things. You mentioned you mentioned uh, all the different places that they're getting their money. Do you guys, do you have any idea of like not what percentage, but you know, do they get a small amount from ransoms or just a large well, amount or see if I have, I don't know if I have percentages of that. Um, let me see what I have here. I mean, should we think it's yeah, a big amount? Yeah, most of it is from criminal and terrorist activities. Uh, that's a, a small portion is from outside donors. Okay, and on the outside donors, do you know which countries we're talking about? Well, it's it's private citizens. It's yeah, not, it's I understand. Not, uh, not governments. Any governments. We've worked very hard with a number of particularly Gulf countries, whether it's Kuwait or Qatar, uh, obviously uh, other countries as well on this. Okay, and then just one more. Um, I know you can't talk about the operation, but can you tell us if there were any other non-kinetic type um, approaches to getting him back? Non, I mean, we're putting a lot of intelligence resources towards this. Were there uh, any other, you know, ideas that were being pursued? I'm not going to outline specifics, particularly because we still have hostages there. So we're looking at a wide range of options. Uh, every tool at our disposal to try and get, uh, find them, locate them, and then and then return them home. But I'm not going to outline specifics, so we have the ability to use them if we want to. Anything else on this? Yes, in the back. No, no, no. Saeed's taking us to a different yeah. subject. Can we go to Gaza? We can. Uh, Marie. Uh, are there any efforts ongoing by the administration, by the Secretary of State in particular, to broker some sort of a ceasefire? Because there were statements yesterday by the Israelis that this can go on for a very long time, and the, hum the humanitarian situation is really... Well, we do closer. remain concerned about the developments. The Secretary has been engaged with a number of relevant parties. Uh, we also condemn Hamas's targeted attack on Ben Gurion Airport and Hamas's threat against civilian aviation. So uh, that's something that is unacceptable. The Abraka fire needs to stop, and we do want them to return to ceasefire talks. So okay. that is something we are certainly still pressing with uh, relevant parties. Okay, but to the best of you now, there are no a actually ongoing activities to, to broker are ceasefire th by the Secretary of State. Well, he, he, we've never been playing the brokering role. I mean, okay, trying to mediate or get the, the Well, he's been playing the role he's been playing throughout these ceasefire talks, which is discussing and helping where we can with the different parties. Okay. Now, I asked you yesterday about Israel uh, and uh, about the commission, and you said that uh, you trust Israel investigating itself. We you call on them too. You call on them. So, mm -hmm. do you trust their, you know, their past efforts that they have done, or their future effort to investigate themselves? I mean, you have. Well, it's not about trust. It's about seeing if their investigation is done, and and we keep pushing that with them. Okay. Now, th should they investigate each case on its own, case by case? For instance, the reason I ask this. You know, uh, apparently a Palestinian boy, a teenager, was taken at gunpoint by the Israeli army as a human shield for five days, and he describes in details what happened and so on. So should these incidents, if they, if they happen, first of all, do you condemn these incidents? Well, I don't have any idea what incident you're talking okay. about, and I'm sorry well, about that. Uh, we think they should investigate any allegation of, of uh, wrongdoing or of civilian deaths uh, that arise. Oh. Yes, we do. W would you raise with them the, the abduction of a 16-year-old Ahmed Abu Raida on the 23rd of, of July? I can and check into for that case. Okay. Now, let me that. also ask you uh, another development just occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently that the holdup on the missiles to Israel was just lifted. Uh, is that likely really? to serve to, well, uh, or apparently to, uh, to the, on the way there of being resolved? I don't know. I mean, could you there, tell us whether was well, there any any new any uh, if, any change could, in the let status? Me check, let me check on the status. The there was not a hold. The process was moving forward, as right. I said. Uh, we had just put some additional steps into place. So let me see if it's progressed further. Okay, I can check but, on that. I but, hadn't heard that, but it very well may. But are you concerned that uh, you know this would add to the sort of the explosive power that uh, Israel has been sort of deploying uh, limitlessly, to, uh, almost using bunker busters and so on, killing large number of civilians and so on. Wouldn't that exacerbate the situation? Well, uh, Saeed, we've always said we will continue to support Israel militarily. They are facing a very serious threat. We've also said throughout this conflict that they need to do more to protect civilian casualties, and we believe we can do both. Mm -hmm. uh, my last question on this, there's also fear that, uh, you know, there, there's a likelihood of a spread of uh, some sort of germ and, and microbes and uh, diseases uh, among civilian population. 
uh, and Gaza, which could conceivably also be you know, communicated in, in the neighboring areas and so on. Are you discussing with the Israelis the likelihood of the, the breakout of disease? Uh, I haven't seen that specifically, but we are very concerned about the humanitarian situation in Gaza, particularly the large number of internally displaced peoples uh, and all the things that go along with that, whether it's needing food or water or medical care. So we are concerned and discussing it. I'm going to go to the back here, I promised you. Thank you, my dear Alan. Thank, thank you, my dear. Wait one second. Yeah. Okay. On South Korea, a distant secretary of the U.S. Treasury Department Cohen visit to South Korea right now. Can you tell us what is the purpose of his visit to South Korea? Uh, let me check. I knew he was there. Let me check with my colleague, the Treasury, and we'll get you something. Or right. they should have some information about his visit. Do you think the United States <coughs> have a new individual sanctions against North Korea? Well, we don't tend to preview sanctions before we announce them, but it's been an ongoing conversation that David Cohen and others have had with the South Koreans. Uh, I'm sure he's there, though, talking about a range of uh, Treasury-related issues. Elliot, did you have one on Gaza? Yeah. Do you know, what can you say about, apparently this week, EU um, diplomats in the UN have been pushing for a UN Security Council resolution to, uh, to end the conflict in, in Gaza and restart peace talks? Do you know anything about that? Or can you uh, I don't have any specifics on that and, and hadn't seen those reports. We're obviously looking at a range of ways to get a ceasefire in place here, and if that could involve some UN action, I'm sure we would have that conversation, but nothing to preview or... But broadly anything. speaking, the U.S. would support a, a UN Security Council <coughs> resolution. It depends what it looks like. Yes. Can I go back to Syria just one minute? Yes. Um, you mentioned that uh, there are a small number of American uh, jihadist mm -hmm. fighters in Syria. So do you have an accurate number? Let me see if I, I'm not sure I have a number. Just give me one second on this. No, just a small number. We think that there are approximately 12,000 fighters from at least 50 countries uh, in Syria, foreign fighters. Uh, including a small number of Americans that may have traveled to Syria since the beginning of the conflict. They may all not still be there. It could be dozens, it could be hundreds, or? Small number, I'll check and see if there's more clarity. And do you know if uh, some of these people have already returned to, to the United States? Uh, obviously, that's something we're very concerned about. I don't have any information on that. Yeah, on this very issue, uh, a lot of these fires have come from Europe and go to Syria. Apparently, they cross uh, the border with, with Turkey. Are you talking Turkey to perhaps tighten up control over their border? We're talking to all of the bordering countries to yeah. help uh, cut off uh, foreign fighters from going into Syria. Because as it seems, you know, people with European passports can travel easily in, into Turkey and out. Huge concern. So. Yeah, it's a huge concern. Yes. A couple of points on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, Russians are pushing for the Security Council supporting a ceasefire in western Ukraine while, while the humanitarian assistance from Russia is being delivered. I was wondering if the United States is in support of this initiative. I hadn't seen that initiative. What we would support is uh, the parties on that. We, we know there has to be a cessation of hostilities during any sort of humanitarian delivery. There's uh, ongoing discussions right now about inspections and, and what that will look like. Uh, but we've called on Russia to use uh, its, its uh, influence with these separatists to get them to hold their fire. The Ukrainians have said they've committed to do that, uh, but the separatists keep uh, firing and keep keep uh, the hostilities going. So in terms of Security Council, I don't have anything on that, but we think that the separatists, they could do this on their own without the Security Council. Okay. And there is another thing I would to ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, there is this group here in the United States which calls itself Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity. Uh, they Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity? For Sanity, yes. How am I not a member of that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. I've never heard of this. They, they wrote either two or three memoranda on um, the Malaysian airliner crash in Ukraine, in which they criticized the administration for both what it said and how it said about this tragedy. Uh, I was wondering if uh, the U.S. government still stands by its conclusions that it made public Absolutely. earlier about that. hundred percent. We still okay. stand by them. I am not aware of that report. Um, okay. I would say it probably is the opposite of its name, but I don't have any further comments on something I haven't seen. And the other thing is... I got a little laugh there. Do you think it might, those con conclusions of yours might get updated or... 
We always uh, update our analysis as we get new information, but the information we have uh, from the MH17 crash, with, which happened in a number of weeks ago, uh, was very strong uh, and uh, very much led to the conclusion that we said at the time that this was shot down from Russian separatist-controlled territory by a surface-to-air missile that the separatists have. And so, look, we'll continue. The, the investigation's ongoing uh, in The Hague in terms of looking at the black box. I understand some of the remains will be returned to Malaysia today. Um, that's ongoing, but the, the evidence shows what happened here uh, very clearly. Uh, Marie, I know that you touched upon the crash site itself and what happened to mm -hmm. it until you the, uh, early this week. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more information on what is going on? Who controls the crash site? What happened to the My remains? My understanding the separatists do. Uh, in terms of remains, just give me a second, Saeed. Let me pull up what I have here. I think I have something. Uh, yes, the first group of remains of Malaysian victims of the shootdown will arri arrive tomorrow, excuse me, tomorrow in Kuala Lumpur. Again, um, would take this opportunity to express our condolences uh, for the families of those killed in this horrific plane crash. Uh, obviously, we're very focused on investigating uh, and holding people responsible. As I said earlier, their initial report of the investigation into the cause is expected by the end of August. We have contributed to the investigation, uh, both information and expertise through the Department of Justice, the NTSB, and FBI. That was a question I took from Matt the other day. And the ESAF team that you deployed to the embassy in Kiev, are they still there? Are the NTSB people? No, no, no. E sorry, you? ESAF team. It was the... It was oh, the uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I believe okay. they may have... Let me check on that okay. for you. It's a good question. We what else? There's a report that uh, there's going to be an expert level meeting next month on INF consultations. Do you have any confirmation of that? So, just we have made clear to Russia that uh, we want to talk about this. We've notified them of our determination to do so in a senior level bilateral dialogue immediately with the aim of assuring the U.S. that Russia will come back into compliance. We don't have a date set for that yet. I think we're still working out details. So you say senior, so you would, your preference would be for a senior level, not senior an expert level. Senior level bilateral. Okay. They so, actually, yeah, so, go ahead. Sorry, uh, yeah, no it's a follow-up to that. The Russians okay. actually said today that it's going to take place in, in September. Expert level talks in September. Okay. Do you well, have let me check with that? our team. I know this is what yeah. we had notified them that we wanted to do. So let me check on those conversations okay. for you. Yes. Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmed Davutoglu has been nominated for, uh, you know, governing AK Party, uh, to lead the governing AK Party, and then being a prime minister, succeeding. President elect Erdogan. Uh, what would be your assessment on this? I understand this is a nomination. There's a process that has to play out now. We look forward to working with whoever is the next Prime Minister. And I think we'll refrain on further comment until that process is over. The Secretary has worked very closely with uh, Foreign Minister Davutolo. He's spoken to him a number of times this week, uh, very closely on Gaza, uh, on other issues as well. Another subject? Mm -hmm. Pakistan. Uh, Madam, first of all, I want to set the record straight. Yesterday, my question on Nawaz Sharif, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, comparing with the Iraqi Prime Minister, those were not my views, but those were the views from Mr. Qadri and Mr. Uh, 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 the cricket player, Imran Khan. Imran Khan. Yeah. And they have repeated again mm -hmm. yesterday the same comment, but they also included uh, Masali and also Hosni Mubarak of Egypt. <laughs> My question is today, um, do you really take these uh, huge demonstrations and the leaders behind them seriously? Well, we're monitoring the demonstrations. Obviously, we think there should be a space in Pakistan for peaceful expression of views. Uh, so it's something we're looking at. Uh, we are in no way involved in the process or the discussion between the parties. Any suggestion to the contrary is uh, completely false. Uh, so we're watching it, but we do think that there needs to be peaceful dialogue and no attempts to change uh, Pakistan's government through extra constitutional attempts. So Nawaz Sharif is prime minister. Uh, that's who we will keep working with, as we will with a number of, of people in, in uh, Pakistan as well. And finally, if there were any contacts between Islamabad and Washington or about this uh, current situation? Uh, Ambassador Olson meets quite frequently with a range of officials. And I believe that's where the contact has occurred. Thank you. And thank you for clarifying on yesterday. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Elliot. Thailand. Um, 
The skipping around the world today. Yeah. <laughs> the Legislative Assembly has uh, selected the former Army, well, soon to be former Army Chief as Prime Minister. Do you have any response to that? Yes. We hope that the selection of an interim Prime Minister is a step in a process that leads to the establishment of inclusive democratic institutions and a freely and fairly elected civilian government. We have urged the interim government once formed uh, to institute a, an inclusive reform process that reflects the diversity of views within Thailand mm -hmm. uh, and do remain concerned about the limits on space for freedom of speech and assembly. What, have you heard anything from, from your colleagues in Thailand about how long he will be interim prime minister? We have not. We have not. I know they talked about some dates for elections, but uh, I haven't heard more details well, I th on that. Well, if I'm not mistaken, the last time they said was October 2015. That's what I had heard last yeah. as well. I don't have any more updates for you. Okay. And I think the last time we heard about the review of U.S. aid to Thailand was maybe a couple months ago. Are yes, there any updates? Yes, there's not. By law, we cannot resume uh, our legally restricted assistance to Thailand until a democratically elected government takes office. But in terms of the specific elements that are being withheld, are there any others from the last time we heard? Nothing new. Nothing, nothing new okay. on that. What else? Yes, in the back. Central African Republic. Yes. Earlier this week, there were reports of um, renewed clashes um, involving international peacekeepers and militants in Bangui. Mm -hmm. um, in light of this ongoing unrest, in spite of the presence of international peacekeepers, is the U.S. considering any additional engagement in the CAR to help stem some of this unrest? Well, we uh, have been very engaged on this issue and know that the violence there has to stop. We've urged all parties to fully abide by and implement the July 2014 Secession of Hostilities Agreement. We have initiated efforts and are supporting the regional mediation efforts of others to reconcile the parties in the conflict. Just a few points on that. We've committed up to $100 million for equipment, airlift, and training for African and French peacekeeping troops in the CAR. It includes 37 trucks given to the AU mission, an additional 200 vehicles that will start arriving as MISCA transitions to the UN peacekeeping operation in mid-September. Uh, we also remain committed to holding individuals accountable. We've imp implemented UN Security Council and U.S. targeted sanctions against five individuals. I uh, believe these are important uh, steps that we've taken. I don't have any additional steps to preview, but we have been engaged in both supporting the peacekeeping and holding people accountable. Yes, yes, here and then to Ali. A very light one, offbeat one. Um, Can I is, guess what it is? <laughs> yes. Is it, is it correct that the State Department sent a, sent a cable to its ambassadors to ban them from participating? Not, not, it wasn't, it's not limited. It's not just about ambassadors. Federal government ethics rules prevent us uh, from using our public offices, such as high public offices, such as ambassadors, for private gain, uh, no matter how worthy the cause is. And this is, of course, a, a worthy cause. Uh, that, uh, for that reason, high-ranking State Department officials are unfortunately unable to participate in the Ice Bucket Challenge. Is that Thank you. I do not know. I'm sorry, I don't want to Just speak curious. for that. <laughs> we obviously continue to wish the ALS uh, Association success. Obviously, it's a very important cause. Yes. And related to that, are there any efforts to um, uh, U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro participated in the challenge before, before this went out? Before, yeah. sure. So. Should we expect any, I don't know, disciplinary actions or anything further? I don't, I don't have any details on any of that. I don't, I would, I would uh, guess no, but. Thank you. One more? Yes, please. Just to clarify the Twitter issue, I mean, with the Twitter with the ISIS. ISIS, uh-huh. When they took, uh, Twitter and YouTube, when did they took away the, the mo I mean, the, the, the video, video of mm -hmm. the, the uh, killing, it was done by them, I mean, correct. Yes, I mean, by them. YouTube, YouTube guys. Yes. Or you ask you and the DOD. Well, we in the Defense Department spoke to them, and we would highlight the video would be taken down by YouTube and then pop up in other places on YouTube. So we would highlight for them when that happened. But they t they take all the action here. They take it down if it violates their terms of service. And regarding the Twitter account, mm -hmm. is that a request from you, or they again? The Twitter people decided to do the it. The Twitter people decide what they do with their own platform. We highlight for them when these things exist online, which they want these things not to be on their websites either. Uh, so we think uh, when things violate their terms of use, and we just don't think this should be one, able to be out there. One thing that, just to complete, because a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. it was from raised from this podium the issue that there was State Department following the Twitter of the 
ISIL and then there is kind of discussions or intervening in some of the discussions to correct their perception. Well, that's separate. That's completely separate. So it's done. Now it's done, that uh, policy? Well, no. The, any Look, o online we engage in a variety of ways with a variety of actors, but that effort and how we do that in counter ISIL's messaging uh, online is v very different than this uh, in some ways very bureaucratic conversation we have when we see a video that violates this terms of service that YouTube it, you know, wants not to be on its website, we flag that for them. I, I guess to the recruiting YouTube, is that apparently had recruiting YouTube. It's a huge problem. I mean, so is, that, is that something that should fall under that same guideline? It's no did, well, I would refer to them for what their specific usage policy is. I don't know if propaganda, where that falls in it. I was speaking very specifically to the video particularly that we had had conversations about. I just want to say that this was a brutal uh, uh, murder or brutal propaganda by the terrorists. And in India, most of the television stations, they refused to show the video. Good. Well, I wish more people yeah, were like thank that. You. Thank you for pointing that out, though. I wish, I wish there were. And you know, online, we've tried very hard uh, to not uh, let this video uh, be seen by any, anyone else, quite frankly. So. They, uh, going through those video, video links, um, I came across that most of them say that the, the owner of the channel has taken it down, has removed it. It doesn't say that YouTube has... Uh, well, the owner is YouTube. Okay. So, again, I don't speak for YouTube, but uh, I, I don't think they want people violating their policies. Yeah. So, okay, thanks, guys. And no planning on a briefing tomorrow. It's Friday in August.